Welcome to the fifth in our uh, video series with the Joke API tutorial, which highlights how the Sweet Engine API engine works. On this video, we're going to be exploring what to do with the response that we get from an API call using basic mappings. If you remember from our last video, we were constructing paths to be able to make the call. We saw the information that it returned but now we're actually going to do something with that information. And our objective is to um, populate a table, populate a table in Business Central um, with the data that we're receiving back from the API call from our joke. So we'll be introducing uh, API mappings. We will be using the API message data buffer to construct the skeleton of the mappings, and we'll be reviewing the lifecycle of, of an API message. So if you remember, we can break down uh, an individual API call. Each API call in our Sweet Engine API Engine product has a message associated with it. And in this case, we have an API function that we choose we add parameters to it, uh, which are essentially variables that are bound at runtime to the um, request. We build the request, we send the request, receive a response, and then process the response. We've seen it up through building the data buffer in previous videos. And in this video, we will be uh, working on processing the mappings. Now let's take a look at uh, Business Central and, and give an example of uh, how to do the mappings to uh, a table within BC. So if you recall, we were before uh, had these API functions that we defined. Um, most of these were what I'll call hard coded, meaning that uh, we were giving the parameters statically or hard coded. Uh, for what we wanted to do. And then in our last video, last two videos, we started uh, making it so that variables at runtime would be bound to the API call. So essentially for a production solution, we can use one API function for multiple things. So essentially this one says we'll retrieve safe joke from uh, should probably be safe jokes from a category provided at runtime. And we're not only going to be providing the category at runtime, but how many we want back as well. So our objective is to map the data that we get back from uh, the joke API to some table within Business Central. And just uh, so that we don't have to code. Uh, eventually, we will create a joke table uh, using code with all the fields. But for right now, I'm just going to use the standard text codes table. And you can see that that's empty at this point in time. So let's come back here. And now let's explore previous messages because this can kind of give us a leg up on doing the mappings. So if we take a look at a previous example, we can see that its data buffer is, is loaded. And when we take a look at that data buffer, we can see that we have structured information that we received back from um, the API call. One thing that I want to highlight in this data, and knowing the data helps with the mapping, uh, but you can see that this type says single. And then the field, when it's a single type, we get the actual joke in a field called joke. But when we get a two-part joke, as in this example, you can see we don't get the joke field uh, with this type of, of joke. We get a setup and delivery. So we'll learn how to handle that as well as a bonus. So what we want to do is create mappings that tell us where we want this information to go. Um, also notice that uh, we have an array of jokes so every time a new joke appears, we're going to get uh, this joke heading at this level. And you can see by the path how it extends out. But let's go ahead and press this button called Update API Mapping. 
And what it will do is actually create a skeleton mapping for us with the data that it sees in this data buffer. So let's go back to our actual function. And now for this um, function that we're working with, let's look at the mappings. And you can see we have essentially the skeleton where, okay, the, the top level was response object. Uh, we got some information on, and then we have the array of jokes. Okay, and you can see by the path there that it's, it's following. Uh, so for each joke in the array, we have these fields. And you can see we have a setup, we have a delivery, and we actually have a joke. So those three fields. So we're going to be using we're going to be using the uh, uh, standard text table. So the first thing we want to do is to say this is our starting place. This is where uh, the base object is, and we're going to call this a table node. So essentially what we're doing is we're telling it what table we want to deal with, and it's going to be the standard text table. Okay. The next thing we want to do is say, well, where does our array of jokes start? So we're going to designate this as a record node and say, yep, it's a record of table seven. We can actually have record nodes within record nodes that essentially populate sub subtables. We don't have that in this, in this example, uh, but it is possible. So now in our, in our joke table, it really only has two fields. It has an ID and a description. So here is a good thing. So actually it has a code and a description, but so the ID from the joke table will make sense to put in the code field of the standard text table. So let's go ahead and do that and say, um, that this is table seven again, and we're actually going to put it in the code field. Notice that we that uh, the API engine knew that that was a key and checked this box. That's kind of important. The other thing that we have to do is say, okay, well, what type is it? So this is an element, meaning that it's going to be data that we want to, to move. Okay. So now we know that we have for certain types of jokes, uh, information in here, but it's going to be an either or, right? There, it's not going to be that we have a joke and a setup at the same time. So we'll say this is also belongs in table seven and it's going to be the description field. But we want something from our two part joke. And unfortunately, we only have one field, right? So let's take the setup part of a two part joke and put it in there. So the API engine kind of ignores things that it doesn't find in the actual data. So that we're mapping both of these values to the same field doesn't hurt because we know that when we get a joke, it's going to be one or the other. Uh, there's, there's no indication that both of those values would be present in a particular joke. Okay, so we're mapping both of those values to the same field. Uh, if it were the case that uh, both of those fields were part of the same joke, then the last one to process would essentially get the update. Okay, so we have this set up now. These are our mappings. We're saying we're dealing with this standard text table, uh, and these are the fields that we want to map. One other thing we need to do to this function, because when we first defined it, we said that we weren't going to do any response processing. So we really need to do that now. So when we say the response processing method, we need to say that this is going to be a multiple record update, okay? Meaning that we're getting a list back and um, we want it to either insert or update existing records in the table. So this is kind of that designation. It's going to look at the data, go try to find the record uh, with the keys if it finds it, it's going to update that the values with the, uh, the field values that we got. If it doesn't find it, it's going to do an insert into that table. So in other words, add a new record. Okay, so we have everything here. So let's go and start a new API message now and see how far we can get. So let's just go here. We'll say new. 
just as a review point, we now have um, an API message defined to do this API function. And essentially what we need to do is um, go down and add the request parameters. So we're gonna add a new parameter. It's gonna be a table record. We're going, remember we were using the item category. Uh, so how's the category? And we're gonna get them from the miscellaneous category again. So we want miscellaneous jokes. And then we also need to add a key value, which is essentially going to be the amount. So we need to say for the variable amount that we specified in our API variables, we want to know how many jokes do we want to get back. So for, um, for this example, we'll pick six. Okay, so we have an API message with the function code defined. We have it with parameters. Okay, we don't have uh, a response back yet, uh, and we haven't built the URL. We could step through it, but because we have everything that we need to do, okay, so that was actually a key change, so it needs to verify that, I can just press execute, okay? And then it go through all the remaining steps versus doing the ascend load response process data buffer. So this is where the mappings come into place, is actually the, the process data buffer. But we'll just have it go and do the whole thing uh, to keep this video a little shorter. So we'll do the execution. It's actually made the call. Uh, we can see down here that we did get six jokes back. Uh, here's the, the URL that we constructed with for the miscellaneous category with the amount of six, all according to these parameters that were put into. Okay. We can go and look at the data buffer. You can see that we did get a, a joke back with ID 94, right? Plus several others, okay? And it was a two-part joke whose setup began with my mother said. So let's take a look at that. Now let's look at our standard text table. And you can see, well, there it is. Um, there's joke ID 94 with my mother said, and we can see that we've populated um, six new jokes uh, in this uh, table. If we made repeated calls, we may get the same joke ID back uh, throughout it. And in that case, it would essentially do an update on this record. So in other words, it wouldn't duplicate records. It would simply find it and then update it. Okay, so that's our basic mapping ses session. I hope you uh, enjoyed that. Uh, we're gonna continue on with kind of another mapping example. I think what we'll do is go through and get the joke categories. It's a little bit of a different process because of the way that the data is organized. Uh, and then we'll move and progress through the video series uh, and probably pretty soon start some actual coding examples. Well, thank you for watching and until next time.